G'day guys and gal. The Eldar don't usually go so hot when it's toe to toe against space marines. These studies increase strength, durability, and firepower usually dominates the Elder's uh, extremely condescending attitudes. However, this isn't always the case. Some Eldar warriors can match the space marines blow for blow if not exceed it, and none demonstrate this more than the striking scorpion. Eldar aspect warriors led by their phoenix lord, Karandras, the shadow hunter, a warrior that kicks ass and eats a studies for breakfast in either order. Out of all the aspect warriors, the striking scorpions are some of the most hardcore, mysterious, and badass, actively seeking to engage Astartes in melee combat, which makes them different from like 99% of other Eldar warriors off the bat. Despite this, they have a dark twist born from betrayal, and they have to work harder than any other Cryfold Eldar to keep their souls away from Slaanesh. Before we get started, another day, another major mini. This time, we have the Space Elf Scorpion Lord, the second member of the major mini Space Elf Lord Roster going up alongside the Space Elf Death Lord. If he looks familiar, then get your eyes checked. Bitch. Sculpted with nanometer precision and 3D printed with love, this deadly killer would make a great addition to any space elf army or a fantastic start to a new one. And if you aren't into army collecting, then there's not many better sculpts out there to paint. Obviously, I'm biased, but you know, there is some truth in that. So to pick up your very own space elf scorpion lord, as well as check out dozens of other handcrafted original major mini models, then link is below. Worldwide shipping is only $10, and if you order $70 or more, shipping is totally free. Today, we'll go over the lore of Karandras and his striking scorpions, detailing their origins, their specializations, and some of their more badass moments from the lore. Uh, let's get into it. For the 60 million years after the war in heaven, the Eldar Empire was dominant and unchallenged. With no challenge, the space elves became a bunch of pussies. Their wars were fought by machines and physical labor became a thing of the past. Everyone was hot, horny, and bored. They also were immortal, living for thousands of years before reincarnating themselves into new bodies. Life was pretty good, but from this excess came depravity, as these immortal godlike Eldar had to develop into more fucked up fetishes in order to feel something. By the time the Eldar Empire collapsed, almost everyone was railing space coke and doing anal 24-7, with countless trillions of highly psychic Eldar all taking a part in this depravity simultaneously for years, it caused the birth of Slaanesh, whose birth sent out a demonic shockwave that annihilated most of the Elder Empire, with each of their core worlds being consumed by madness, demons, and other nasty things. One of the main Eldar groups to survive were the Craftworlders, Eldar nomads who rode on massive flying ships. As they would spend years away from the Elder Empire at a time and life was a bit more labor intensive on a ship, they didn't fall like the rest of their race. However, with the Elders fall came the loss of their war machines and other insta wind technology. They were now no longer invincible in a galaxy full of orcs, evil Xenos, and the rising warlike humanity. As such, the Elder had to learn how to fight. A legendary Elder arose amongst his peers, Asaman. It was he who led the Elder Craftworlds away from the fuck fiesta, and it was he who raised up his race from a bunch of pointy-eared pussies to a warrior race of survivors by founding the first Aspect Warrior Shrine. This shrine wasn't a particularly specialized shrine, as you can see by the Dire Avengers literally being Eldar Guardians with extra cheese. However, from these original Eldar Warriors arose a number of very talented Eldar Exarchers. Eldar who founded their own techniques of war and would create the other Aspect Warrior Shrines. Stuff like the Shining Spears, Swooping Hawks, and yes, the Striking Scorpions founded by Arha. Now you might be like, what the fuck Major Kill? Why is this video about Karandrus if Arhra was the striking scorpion's phoenix lord? And yeah, I'll fucking get to that dickhead. The Striking Scorpions were unique in that their founder is the only Phoenix Lord to ever abandon his own shrine, and he did so in terrible and violent fashion. See, the issue with the Scorpions was their method of fighting. It was so different to normal Eldar battle doctrine that usually speaks of discipline, hit and run, skirmishing, and so on. Even the Leroy Jenkins howling banshees have grace and elegance to their combat, almost like a harlequin. Striking Scorpions, however, were told to basically jump on their enemy's head and then tear them apart in a frenzy of violence that would make Kane proud. The issue with this is that large instances of Eldar emotion, especially negative emotion, would attract the gaze of Slaanesh, turning Eldar to darkness as their souls were drained. Arhra did not believe in the discipline and restraint of the other Phoenix Lords. There are conflicting reports of what happened next, but it appears that in his darkness, Arhra lured the other Phoenix Lords into a trap and unleashed a demonic horde against them, causing mass death amongst the Aspect Shrines, whilst Arhra himself fled into the webway to join up with the Dark Eldar. 
Eldar. However, some others claim that Arha stood against Chaos when the other Phoenix were scared. I'm inclined to believe the first story though, cause like, yeah, you don't just go to the Dark Elder for the lols. However, before the striking scorpions were dissolved, a legendary warrior, Arha's best student, emerged, Karandras, to become the shrine's new Phoenix Lord, making it the first and only time a Phoenix Lord has been replaced. Karandras knew the worth and power of the striking scorpions, teaching them even more discipline and restraint than the other aspect shrines, so that they could deal with their extreme acts of violence without tainting their souls. Meaning you could argue that a striking scorpion is the most badass and willful of all the aspect warriors. They're their skill and discipline so elite that they can literally kill Astartes blade guard and champions in melee combat. As for Arafra's fate, the leading theory is that he became Draza, the greatest Dark Elder warrior to ever live. However, this is not confirmed, and more recent lore seems to suggest that they are in fact two different characters, with Arafra going on to found the Dark Elder Incubi, whilst Draza just was some random badass, who also became a Dark Elder Incubi. It could also be a combo of the two, with Draza being Arafra's combat persona, as as he probably got bored of directing from behind the scenes. Draza has the power of the other Phoenix Lords, that being the ability to reincarnate via one of his disciples taking their armor and donning it. So yeah, it's more than likely Arha is Draza. Either way, it seems like Arha is still alive in the current setting, as Karandras and Arha had a hectic 17 day duel towards the end of M41. Once again though, this duel has contradicting lore, with most Eldar believing that Karandras was unable to get the upper hand on the unbeatable Arha, hence instead use Arha Arha's bloodlust and frenzy to trick him into killing his own students while Karandras escaped. However, a striking scorpion exarch who donned Karandras' armor to take over the mantle, as that is how Phoenix Lord Resurrection works as I mentioned, he got a flashback of the duel between the two scorpion lords, and it showed that Karandras actually landed a mortal blow on Arha, forcing Arha to flee in defeat. It's unclear why Karandras wouldn't tell people the truth. Maybe he's just super humble, or maybe it's funny to lie about Arthra having roid rage and killing his own men. Or maybe, just maybe, the writers need to get their shit together when it comes to Eldar lore. But regardless of Karandras straight up beat Arthra, or he tricked him into massacring his own warriors, he won either way. Making Karandras the true Phoenix Lord of the Striking Scorpions. And yeah, holy shit this guy's a beast. He cuts through space moons like they are nothing, able to kill entire squad so within a handful of seconds. His war gear is also off its chops. His scorpion bite, that being the two guns in his helmet, can blow a hole in nearly anything. His scorpion chainsword and claw make for a disgusting melee combo. Both weapons are mastercrafted as befitting his Phoenix Lord status. For versatility, he also has a shuriken catapult built onto his claw, meaning he can shoot you as he rips you limb from limb. For an extra bit of spice, Karandras also carries plasma grenades, so that's fun. Karandras was last seen helping the Yanari as he fought against the Thousand Suns. However, just like the rest of the Phoenix Lords from that battle, he is currently missing. But what of the Striking Scorpions? Well, since the Striking Scorpion Aspect Warrior is just like a cutesy version of their Phoenix Lord, you should already have a pretty good idea about their vibe. The Striking Scorpions are wildly strong, easily the strongest craft world elder there are as a result of their training and their ability to tap into the power of Cain that resides within each and every Eldar. Because of their discipline, they can access this power without going full retard. Their battlefield role is infiltration as well as shock infantry, designed to ambush the enemy and rip them to shreds. Their armor is bulkier and sturdier than other Eldar armor, to account for the fact that they are some of the only Eldar that are man enough to melee fight orcs or space marines. They do share a lot of similarities to Howling Banshees, but they're also very different. Howling Banshees suck at stealth because they fucking scream and shit, yet they are more agile and faster than a scorpion, whilst the scorpion is more physically powerful. They can both fulfill the role of shock troops, but in different ways. While striking scorpions share a similar loadout to their Phoenix Lord, they don't get access to a power claw until they become an Exarch, meaning they go into battle with a chainsaw in one hand and a pistol in the other. They still have their Mandy Blaster, which are those mini gun helmets that are a pretty good way to surprise someone. Yeah, don't try and headbutt a striking scorpion. Funnily enough, as the striking scorpions and Dark Elder Incubi have the same founder, that being Ahra, their combat style is very similar, with Incubi and Scorpions always being flustered when fighting each other due to how similar their combat style is. Another funny thing they have in common is that both warrior types are seen as borderline outcasts by their respective Eldar factions. The Scorpions being too vicious for most craft welders, whilst the Incubi are too honorable for most Dark Eldar. There was even an Incubi who joined a craft world and quickly rose through the striking Scorpion ranks due to having more or less done the exact same training. 
It's thought that under Ahra, the scorpions were literally just shock troops, no stealth, whereas Karandras taught them to be hunters, taking their time and having the discipline to know when to strike. They are so badass because they are so unlike other Eldar. I mean, they literally use fucking chainswords, which are generally considered to be way too primitive for the Eldar, but no, not these guys. It makes sense though. The morale effect on the enemy from chainsorting their comrades apart versus quick clean cuts from a nanometer sharp blade is my own theory as to why they love to use them. Remember, the idea of a shock troop is to shock, causing just as much damage to enemy morale and cohesion as to their lifespans. All in all, it makes the striking scorpions easily one of the most unique and interesting of the aspect warriors, and the reason why I chose the Scorpion Lord as the next major mini for the Space Elf Lord range. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the Space Elf Scorpion Lord. Great sculpt that you really can't go wrong on. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more striking content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.